Most people know about third parties in the United States. The largest and most notable of them is the Libertarian Party. In the 2016 presidential election, they garnered over 4.4 million votes, or 3.28%. They ran Gary Johnson, the former Republican governor of New Mexico. They also have one seat in the House of Representatives. Also in 2016, the Green Party obtained over 1.4 million votes, or 1.07%. They ran Jill Stein, a physician and activist. These third parties did well because a vast majority of voters did not approve of either major party candidate. The Libertarian Party gained a lot of votes from Tea Party Republicans that did not like Trump or Clinton, and the Green Party did the same thing, but with progressive Democrats who most likely supported Bernie Sanders in the primaries. There are more third parties who ran candidates in the 2016 election. The Constitution Party, the Socialism and Liberation Party, and political independents who did not run with a party. But none of the third party candidates received any electoral votes, which is what ultimately matters in the end. If you ever listen to one of these third party candidates speak, they will always say how they could rival the major party candidates if they could be in debates with them. But is this even true? Do you think if you were able to get on the debate stage that you could pull even with Trump and Clinton in these polls? I do. And, and it wouldn't be, it wouldn't have anything to do with my debate performance either. It would just be that people would recognize that there's another choice and that there would be an examination of me and Bill Weld as, as who we are and what we've done and not based on that. I think I could stand up there for the whole debate and not say anything and, and I'm really just a leader. In 1992, Ross Perot ran as an independent and was invited to the presidential debates. On election day, he won over 19 million votes and 18.9%, but he received no electoral votes, so was his run successful? If you thought that his run would have expanded his political base and launched his political party, the Reform Party, into contention, then you would be wrong. He ran again in 1996, but only got 8 million votes compared to his 19 million previously, and 8 million votes equates to 8.4%. He did not run again in 2000, but the Reform Party nominated Pat Buchanan, who only got 448,000 votes and less than 1%. So how could a party that seemed like it, it could only grow bigger dwindle out of contention within three election cycles? The Democratic Party and the GOP have decades worth of funding and support behind them. But in this case, the Reform Party started with no money or influence and quickly failed. So that begs the question, how can a third party be successful today? There are two large groups of people in both major parties that would prefer to have their own party, but cannot because of the reasons that I mentioned earlier. There's a libertarian right Tea Party wing of the Republican Party and the Libertarian Left progressive wing of the Democratic Party. These factions both have members of Congress and senators who align with their political ideologies. This is what the composition of the House of Representatives would look like if these two factions broke away and formed their own party. This is based on members of the Congressional Progressive Caucus and members of the Congressional Tea Party Caucus. It's also assuming that the members of Congress currently in those caucuses would be willing to join the newfound parties. The Progressive Party is in green and the Tea Party is in orange. So, how could these factions form their own parties without failing like other third parties? First, they would both need to coordinate with each other and form their parties simultaneously. Otherwise, the party that didn't split into two would win all elections. Let's say there's a progressive party, a democratic party, and a republican party, but no tea party. That will divide liberals and individuals on the left into two parties. Even in districts and states that always vote democrat, you would see republicans winning. In a state that around 60% of the population are democrats, but there's also a progressive party, you would see Republicans getting around 40% of the vote, but progressives would get 30% and Democrats would get 30%.
assuming that liberals are split 50-50 on progressives and Democrats. It works the same way if the Republican Party split into two, but the Democrats didn't. Progressives would prefer Democrats to win over the Tea Party and Republicans, but the Tea Party would prefer Republicans to win over Democrats and progressives. A policy that would make a more representative government and allow for more than two parties is ranked choice voting. Ranked choice voting allows voters to rank the candidates on the ballot. For example, a Tea Party voter might rank their choices with Tea Party in number one, Republicans in number two, Democrats in number three, and progressives in number four. I'm not going to explain how it works because there's lots of great videos out there that will do exactly that. Do I think that either of the political factions that I discussed in this video will form their own parties anytime soon? Well, not really. But I do think that if they wanted to be successful, they would need to coordinate their formations with each other and pass ranked choice voting nationally in Congress. But anyway, thanks for watching the video, and make sure to like it if you liked it, and dislike it if you did not like it, and goodbye.